were you in Moe's reaction with Javon Hargrave or Javon Hargrave uh, signing? Yeah, where was I? Um, I was probably at home, jumping up and down on my bed. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was just huge. I, I, I had no idea. Um, they kind of kept that one pretty under wraps. And when it came out, I mean, that's as huge of a get. I think he was probably the top free agent on the market, regardless of position. So, um, you know, he's going to make a huge impact for our defense. Have you had an opportunity to spend some time with him? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we spent some time last week together. I asked, I was just kind of asking him how his route was, uh, being on different teams, like how his body was feeling and going into, I think it's year eight. And so, um, you know, he's just excited to be a part uh, of the team. And uh, he, he knew he wanted to go somewhere where he was going to win, win right away. Um, that was important to him. And that just shows you the type of guy that he is. You study other defenses and more specifically, you know, if you watched his film, how much did you see him kind of impact what, what the Eagles were able to do around him. Yeah, I mean all year long you're kinda you're you're keeping up with the the top defenses in the league, right? You want to know like how your defense stacks up <clears throat> against the best. You know, that was something that um, we looked at all year and the Eagles were up there um, every week and it, it was because of that front uh, that front four, front five, you know, guys rotating in and out and, and Javon was right there in the middle causing havoc the, the whole way through. You know, I've seen stats of uh, how many QB pressures he had by himself, and it's kind of just like it's mind-boggling, you know, just to add that to, to a position of need for us. Um, you know, so I know he's going to make a, a big impact. What's your first impression of Steve Wilkes, uh, He fits right in. Fits right in. It's been a seamless transition. Um, you know, he's, he's come in, and he's, he's taken a hold of everything, and we all respect the heck out of him already, you know, as our coach. Um, you know, the, the type of guy that he is, he, you could tell that he genuinely cares about his players. Um, you know, it's important for him to, to build those relationships with us. <clears throat> and, and, you know, we're starting at, at, ground, at ground zero again. You know, everything we've done in the past is behind us. It's, it's a new year, a new opportunity. Um, and I think that's what's exciting. Um, and I know Steve's going to do an amazing job getting us ready. He's going to use the things that y'all do well and then just kind of go from there. Yeah, and I think that's something that was uh, important for, um, you know, bringing bringing a, a new coach in that I guess he is willing to to learn what we what we do and obviously adjust things to what what he believes is going to make us better. You know, that's his job is making us the best uh, defense and, and continuing to raise the bar. And I know he has high expectations for us. He's coming in. Uh, just a super humble guy, uh, super humble, ready to get to work, and we're all feeding off of that same exact energy. Are you a draft fan? Do you like watch the draft? And of course. Put people in Ab absolutely, yeah. I mean, every year you you you, you see guys who are rookies who make a huge impact, and uh, you never know um, how big of a role certain guys are going to play in in that given year. But the draft is where you know. Um, Guys like me, third round draft pick, come in and develop, develop, become, uh, you know, key players for the team. And so every year, I love to see um, who's going to be the next one up. Do you petition for anybody? <laughs> no, no petitioning. Um, I feel like the further and further away I get from the college game, I, I, it's hard for me to keep up with who's coming in and out of the draft, especially past like the first five or ten picks that you might hear about on. So in social media or on TV or something, but um, you know, I know John and Kyle and all those guys. They do such a good job of finding guys that fit what we do, fit our culture. Obviously, you want the best football players, but you want guys who obviously fit what we do as well. Do you remember what people said about you? And in retrospect, was it fair? Um, I, I for sure remember. I for sure remember everything. Um, it was fair though. Uh, I th I think that's their job. You know, guys, are, that's that's everybody's job during this process is to try to break guys down, see what they do well, see what they need to work on. Um, I was a project. You know, I, I was coming in positionless, basically, you know, just a, a, a raw athlete ready to be molded. And so uh, I, I came into the, the the perfect situation. The guys like you in this building, third round, fifth round, seventh round, whatever, that have had a big impact. What is it about this place? What, why do you think it, it works out? And, and do you, you know, preach that to these guys that come in? Like, hey, look at me. Look what I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I shoot. I think I'm, I'm not even like the poster of, of what guys can become. You've seen guys who, even in later rounds, who, who've done a whole, a whole lot more than I've done. Um, I think 
the important thing to always remember is it doesn't matter where you're drafted uh, or even undrafted. You know, once you once you arrive on a team, it's all about what you do going forward. You know, everybody's looked at the same. Um, what you do in between those white lines is what really matters um, and what you're going to be uh, judged on. You know, I, I was told early on by Coach Sala that, you know, you're, you hold the pen to your story. Um, you know, whatever you want your legacy to be, you are in full control of that every single day that you step in, in just on the facility grounds um, and especially on the field. But, uh, you know, you never let somebody else hold the pen for you. Sean Gibson returning due for your defense. Uh, it, it's huge, obviously, with the amazing talent and player that he is, which he showed again last year, um, but also in the in the aspect of being a leader, um, a seasoned veteran for that room, uh, you know, especially losing some guys in free agency, but uh, just kind of having that leader, that veteran leadership presence in that in that back uh, in that back four. The, the line on Wilkes is that he's not going to change much, but have you gotten a sense on whether he's going to? Change anything? I mean, will there be wrinkles, uh, things in the back end that are that are different? Uh, I, I'm I'm sure time will tell. You know, the fact that he has that background of of, of coaching defensive backs and and you know really being involved in that part of it. I know he wants to be hands on with those guys uh, and tiny things up in the back end. Um, just from kind of seeing things these first these first this first couple of weeks of OTAs, I know he wants us to be more aggressive. That's kind of been the thing. Like as I've been here more, like and and. Uh, grown in the system and seeing it progress, you, you see that we want to be more and more aggressive uh, in the front seven. So, uh, you know, like I said, time will tell. Uh, John Lund was talking about um, you know, trying to identify guys in the draft that have the right football spirit that you know, are going to play hard. I mean, all the cliches, it seems like, you know, everyone's going to be like that. But um, in your interactions with the Niners before the draft, I don't know. Do you remember anything specifically as far as them trying to identify, does this guy love football? Does this guy, you know, he'll play his ass off, all that stuff? Sure. Um, let me let me just say I would never want to be a GM or or, or a, a college scout because I'm like, I don't I don't get how you can, you know, you hand pick these cats out of all these different schools all over the country to like and you're saying that this guy's gonna turn into something, you know, like and it's all like projections you know you, you don't really know until they come here and you know and you and you try to develop them and um there's so many different uh different things that go into account of a guy's development but i think in terms of when they brought me in just really sitting me down having having these conversations of like not even not even just all about football but just you want to like just talk to a kid face to face like because obviously you see it you write up these reports about them you watch them on tape and then you want to know like all right well when i sit down with a man to man like what's that conversation like, you know? And so you can usually get a good vibe about it if a guy's just kind of, you know, has lines written down. He's kind of just rehearsing them, or if he's like genu being genuine about what he's saying. Um, but even then, it's like it, it's all words. You know, you can say whatever you want. It's just it's what you do though. When it when it, what matters that's that's what matters most.